Hello there, it's Sandy Allnock, and during this holiday season, I have been, and will continue for a while, drawing characters from the Rankin and Bass holiday specials, and today it's going to be Yukon Cornelius with some changes, so let's get started. Since I'm doing the softer side of Yukon Cornelius, I thought color pencils would be appropriate because there's some soft features. He's got you know, some nice skin that I'll be developing with layers with and a nice big fuzzy kind of beard, really curly and that fun mustache. He's got a knit cap on it. You know, there's just lots of things that are soft and textured. There's some things that are not and I'll be using a bunch of different blending techniques to sh kind of show you, illustrate for you, how you can use those in your artwork. And this is sped up about 165%, I believe. So not quite twice normal speed. But this did take me many hours to do. I was working on it on Thanksgiving. And that was how I spent my day with Yukon Cornelius and doing research on Yukon Cornelius. There were a bunch of things that I discovered about this dude that I did not know. I've watched this holiday special for just, I don't know, when did it come out? I probably watched it that first year, I would guess. And I've watched it ever since, even as an adult, I love it. And it's gonna be on tomorrow, the 29th of November on CBS. So if you wanna see it, tune in. I think it's eight o'clock, eight to nine o'clock. And you can see Yukon Cornelius in all his glory, and you'll find that you will now be aware of the things I'm going to tell you about Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> so yay for that, right? Learning things is always good. So the mustache that I'm coloring here, I layered with a bunch of colors. The tones came out about the same, the values were about the same as the face, and I needed to punch it up. But I needed to punch it up in a way that wasn't going to outline things. When you're drawing a picture that is supposed to look semi-real, I mean, it's a cartoonish image, but it's not supposed to look like it's an outlined coloring page or something like that. So when you put one color down next to another, if it looks too flat, if there's no difference between one edge and another, you'll need to either lighten one side or darken the other side. And you can do that with intensity of color or intensity of value. So sometimes it will just get darker and sometimes it will just turn more into a different color. Like the mustache, I made it more orangey red to differentiate it from the more pinky type of face color that he's got. And I will have to adjust that face color later because it started looking really pink once I put all the other colors down. So when you're doing a drawing, always run your eyes over the whole thing and see if there's anything that needs altered based on what was next to it. The beard, I'm using the same colors that I used for the mustache and I will have all these colors in my Patreon group along with the sketch that I did for this. So if my patrons want to try it, they can certainly make an attempt at it. I This is not a full tutorial with a step-by-step -step here, draw this, draw that, but it gives you enough idea that if you have some experience with color pencil, you might be okay trying this. So you can become a patron and get the colors and the sketch if you would like. Now, the hat is a nice fuzzy thing, just like that layered beard. And the beard I'm gonna add some texture to later, but a lot of times when I'm working with colored pencil, I wait until I've gotten a lot more done before I make decisions about how intense one area is gonna get or another area is gonna get. And in this particular one, there were all kinds of decisions that I just decided I was gonna put off one thing or another. I apologize that the hat didn't get captured. My phone apparently decided it was not going to listen to me when I tapped the tape button. So there you go. But I am going to be drawing a snow dog beagle. now. There's a reason why I am drawing this beagle. It's one of the things I learned about Yukon Cornelius. If you look for Yukon Cornelius's dogs, he's got, you know, a, a team of dogs that he's, he keeps yelling, mush, mush, and they're pulling his sled, right? Well, they're hardly there. They're little bitty dogs. They're little tiny ones compared to him. 
and there's kind of a mishmash of them and they really don't get much real estate. There is a moment in the program where he's yelling, you know, mush you dogs, mush you, you dogs. And they kind of look at him like, you think we're going to be pulling this thing. And finally he says, okay, fine, I'll show you. And all the dogs get on the sled. But the lead dog, I screenshotted it so I could try to figure out what the dog was. The lead dog seems to be a beagle. So I am drawing him holding his beagle. And his beagle is going to be super happy because the beagle did not seem to like pulling the sled. So he's going to be sitting here in Papa's arms. As I said, the softer side of Yukon Cornelius showing a little love to his pup and colored the ears brown. And I made sure that I had some light area around the side of the ear so that a highlight would hit it and it would separate it from the very similar colors that are in the beard. Throughout this entire piece, I used a really limited number of colors. It was not as many as you might expect because I didn't change it when I was going to go from one brown to another. I just layered different colors to go with each one. And one of the colors you'll see layered in a lot of different things is black cherry, I think it's called by Prismacolor. And I layered it in the reds. I layered it in the beard. I layered it on the earmuffs. I mean, there's just lots of places where that color appears. It's a very desaturated dark purple color. And I thought that would be something that I could tie the whole thing together with and just keep adding it to other colors to change them just slightly. So think about that when you're choosing your colors. If you come up with a color set that's going to work for most of your items and then find some common shadow colors that you can use across everything and it'll start to unify the drawing. In creating the pup, I decided I would have the pup's feet facing forward. I did not do very much research for the, the feet looking toward you. So unfortunately, they may not be really realistic, but you know, this whole thing is not realistic. It's a cartoony drawing. So I decided to just let that go and not spend more time dinking around. I wanted to get to the drawing. The jacket, the outfit, the snowsuit, the whatever you want to call this thing, about killed me. <laughs> just went on and on and on because there's so much of it in this drawing. He's wearing just one big denim blue colored suit. And I used black to shade it with because I couldn't find another color that would work. I tried that black cherry and it just turned things into a weird purplish color. And I came up with a plan for how I'm going to make this jacket look different by the end anyway, because I realized he's wearing a denim jacket and he's out in this, the snow, in the tundra, in the Yukon. How is a denim snowsuit going to keep him dry? So later on, I'm going to show you a blending technique where I used a, a solution to make it smoother and make it look more like it's got a sheen on it. So it's got some water repellent now because I worry about him getting all cold and wet out there in the tundra because, you know, I talk to myself about these kind of things. He is carrying a pickaxe. He is known for tasting his pickaxe. He'd throw it at something and then taste it to see if there was silver or gold in it because that's what he was out looking for. He was a miner and those kind of things. So I thought his pickaxe needed to be in the picture, but not knowing much about pickaxes, I just used a couple of photos that I found that were screenshots from the show. There's nothing official that tells you anything about what color things really are because when people screenshot from different devices, some of them may be screenshot just taking a picture off of their uh, of their TV set with a camera. Who knows how long some of these have been out there. So a lot of the colors look weird. Some of the shapes look strange on various pictures. But, but when you're doing a tribute to Jules Bass, who just died in 2022, well, you do what you can do with Google. So now it's time to draw the leather backpack and art supplies. Art supplies. Sandy, why does he have art supplies? Well, let me tell you the story. I was researching this guy because a bunch of people suggested that I should draw Yukon Cornelius. And it's not that I didn't know who he was or anything, but I needed to get a better idea of what he looks like, what his outfit looks like, the things he carries with him, etc., his stance, just lots of things that I wanted to put together in a drawing. 
and he does carry a big old leather backpack, but he has other things. He has like a pen in one pocket. That's the only thing, quote unquote, art supply-ish. But the things I decided to replace in his possession and, and make them art supplies is weapons. <laughs> he was carrying, I did not realize this, he was packing heat. He was carrying in his belt a big old gun. I think it's a Colt 45. And he also had a giant knife and it was in a little knife holder. So I decided the knife holder on his belt was going to hold brushes. And instead of having the gun tucked in his belt, he would have a sketchbook in there. And then in the backpack, I put an easel and another pad of paper in there. So he's got things to draw on because maybe he'll take a hint. And instead of going out and trying to continually kill Bumbles, Abominable Snowman, he will just sit down and sketch instead and make the, the tundra, the Yukon, a more peaceable place. So there's that. Now, every artist is going to have to have some water with them. If he's got paints in his pocket and brushes and things, he's going to need water. So he's got a canteen. He does have a canteen in his character as Yukon Cornelius. So I didn't have to make any of that up. I just had to pick which angle I wanted the canteen to hang down from and decided it would be kind of a three quarters view and layered a bunch of colors because each one of the pictures I found, some made it look like it was more of a rust colored one. Some of them made it look like it was actually silver. And then one that I saw was pretty definitive. It was a side view and it had plaid on it. I have never seen a plaid canteen, but there you go. I decided he was going to have a plaid canteen. And trying to figure out the angles for the lines for the plaid was a challenge. I sat there with my sketchbook trying to figure out how I would do that. Kind of looks like a little mini globe that's tall and skinny. Or maybe a grenade. I'm not really sure which, but, you know, whatever. It is his canteen. So he has water. He also has snow boots on. And I'm not positive how great they are at keeping the snow out because they look a little more like military dress boots because they're black boots and they're shiny and they have platforms on them. They are platform boots. I'm like, oh my gosh, the things I did not know about this Yukon Cornelius guy. But he does have the platforms on them and they probably have cleats on the bottom of them or something like that. Couldn't really tell from seeing him standing in snow because you can't see the bottom of the boots. But I tried to make a warm gray out of the colors that I had because I had a yellowish color in there and I combined it with a, a cool gray, which is one of the other colors I have in the drawing and use the two of them together. You could use a light brown as well to make a color out of colors you already have in your palette for the drawing. And that way you're not introducing another color just for that one portion of the, the drawing. You're, you're using colors you've already got in there and uh, that sort of thing. That's what I was talking about at the beginning, about choosing some colors that you can use throughout and cobble together something rather than just always going to get a new pencil out. Now I'm gonna use some blending solution. And this blending solution is one that I haven't used very often here on YouTube before. It's by US Art Supply and it's simply called Odorless Mineral Spirits. Not a very fancy name for it. But it works just like other things you may have used in the past, like Gamsol and other solvents. And what it does is break down the color, the pigment on the paper and start to blend them. The reason that I'm not blending everything in this is because I want to have contrasting textures. I want to have some things that are soft and some things that are smooth. And this outfit that he's wearing needed to be not denim. And when it was just the pencil by itself, it was a beautiful texture. And I did get it fairly even with that texture, but it did not look like it was going to protect him. So I decided I would use the blending solution on that, on the boots, on anything shiny, and on that leather, just a couple of the areas that I thought that would be enhanced the most because it does enhance and darken colors. And then you can draw on top of it as well once you've done that blending solution. So I created highlights on the jacket, just drawing right on top of everything and using the white pencil along with 
the blue pencil, the same blue pencil that was in the jacket itself, so that I could bring back some highlights. I used enough of the black pencil when I was doing the initial drawing that it really did spread itself throughout the entire jacket. So I needed to raise up some of those highlights again. And then I realized I was also going to have to darken some things again, go back in with the black pencil and just go back and forth until I was satisfied with the balance of dark and light across the whole picture. And that's where just doing that final pass is always really helpful to see if there's areas that need to be darkened more. I had really dark in the the belt and in the boots and in the pickaxe, but I needed to balance that with some really rich dark blacks in the jacket itself. And you can see how much it's coming alive and the whole drawing's coming together because I've got a better balance across the whole drawing. The one area that's still really weak is his beard, but his beard isn't really dark. I don't want to make it black. That was one of the things I was trying to avoid. So I used the blending solution to just tap and basically join some of those colors because this made it a little bit darker. I could pull in some of the black from around his, the, the bottom side of his beard where the shirt is and soften that edge, but without adding a whole bunch of extra color onto the beard itself. So it would still be like touchable. Like I want to go squeeze his beard. I want to go pet it because it looks all soft. and. You know, then I, since I had the blending stump out again, I just kind of ran around and saw if there were any other areas that needed just a little touch of it. But I wanted to keep some of the areas with just pencil to contrast against the really smooth areas. Now, you can also blend with just a white pencil. And with the dog, if I were to use the blending stump, it's going to spread out and intensify the gray that's in the dog but a white pencil is going to lighten whatever's under it. So if you want to make something a pastel, use white over top of it. And you can do white over top of the boots and make some grayish highlights as well as the white highlights that were left. My final detail to add was a background. And this is very limited background. I just wanted a little blue at the bottom to define the snow that he's standing on. So it doesn't look like he's just standing in outer space necessarily on a big void. So reminder to you that I will not be here on Friday this week. I'm going to be here on Wednesday instead. So mark your calendar because there's a new Anita Jerome release. And I'm going to show you some color pencil stuff that I did with these stamps. They are actually really cute and they are Christmas stamps. So just, just letting you know, giving you a heads up. The second thing to remind you is Tuesday night, November 29th on CBS, I believe it's 8 p.m., you can see Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and you can check out the Colt 45 that Yukon Cornelius packs and you can see his big knife and you can maybe catch a glimpse of his puppies. They're only there for split seconds. They're not really featured little characters. And you can hardly see them, but one of them looks like a beagle. The one in the front looks like a beagle, and the others are tinier puppies than that. So, yay, Yukon Cornelius. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Take care and go create something every day. I know it's the holidays, but go do it. I'll see you later.